Greetings Earthlings, today we're looking at a broadcast microphone. So today we're looking at this guy, the Telefunken M82, which is technically a kick drum microphone, but it's also marketed as a broadcast vocal microphone. And if you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around $400. Like always, links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 2i2 second gen. Input gain set at about 4 o'clock. And I'm not going to do any post processing, but I may boost it in post. So check the diddly did to see what I do believe dude. That's not right. Whatever. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. I didn't even try that time. I'm over it. First off, you do get a zippered carrying pouch. You do get the microphone. You get a microphone mount as well as a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. You get a Telefunken branded XLR cable. You get some documentation. And you get a damn sticker! But I actually really like Telefunken's logo, so I'm not going to destroy this one. As far as the build quality, I have no complaints about this thing. It has an all metal body as well as a metal grill with almost no give to it. It is very, very sturdy. And on the front, you also have this very pretty little logo that I have. I love Telefunken's logo. On the back, you will find two switches, a kick drum EQ, which scoops out frequencies focused around 350 hertz, as well as a high boost, which boosts from two kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. As far as the specs, this thing has a super cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 25 hertz to 18 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 54.6 decibels, an impedance of less than 300 ohms, and a max SPL of over 150 decibels. Right now, I'm speaking into the microphone in the neutral mode at about three inches away, and this is how it sounds. Now I've initialized the kick EQ switch, and this is how the microphone sounds. Now I've disabled the kick EQ switch and enabled the high boost, and this is how it sounds. And this is how the microphone sounds with the kick EQ enabled as well as the high boost enabled. Now I'm spinning around the M82 to show you what the off-axis rejection and coloration is. We will go ahead and continue around to 180 degrees, show you how it sounds from the rear. We'll continue moving around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will end at the front of the microphone. Typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect. One foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now let's test the plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Microphone gods up above, can you tell me what I've Microphone gods up above, can you tell me what I've Microphone gods up above, can you tell me what I've done? I am sorry, can you please stop sending me broken microphones? Oh boy. I did not like this at all. <laughs> In terms of pros though, this thing did a very good job at background noise rejection. 
But then in terms of cons, this microphone did a very bad job at rejecting plosives. As Mike Delgadio would say, it is very microphonic, meaning it will pick up everything unless you have a shock mount. It is also just very expensive considering the tone you're getting. And on the note of tone, it is either very dull or very scooped or very top heavy sounding. Now, as far as my overall thoughts on the electric guitar, I wasn't impressed with it on any of the settings. If I did have to use one of the settings, it would be the high boost. But with that setting, it does sound a little bit too top heavy and a little bit too aggressive. On the acoustic guitar, I did actually like it with the high boost enabled because it really opened up the sound and it had a nice body in the low end, just with a lot of really nice articulation on top. For singing, I thought three of the modes were completely unusable, but if you do enable the high boost, it does sound okay, I guess. And then for spoken word in the neutral mode, I thought it was a little bit too dull sounding, if not a little bit too mid forward. You definitely can't use the kick EQ switch because it will just destroy your voice. And then if you enable the high boost, which is what I have been using for this outro, it sounds a little bit too nasally and a little bit too top heavy. But now, would I recommend this microphone? I'm sure most of you could have guessed by now, but no, I would not. But I do have a caveat. I don't have a kick drum and I do not have a bass amp to test this on and maybe it's phenomenal on those two use cases. But for spoken words, singing, electric guitar or acoustic guitar, I don't think this microphone performs well enough in any of those use cases to justify the cost. There are much better options out there for both broadcast voice and for music applications that are at this price point or significantly cheaper that in my opinion would be a much better use of your money. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up, hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos? You can subscribe by clicking the logo over there, or you can click that subscribe button and the bell button below the video. Want to hang out in the Discord server? I'll throw a link in the description, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.